Hi, I'm Rick Morris of the Rick Turns channel. This is the second of three videos about wood turning workshops. Uh, I live fairly close to Mike Peace of the Mike Peace Wood Turning channel. We thought it would be interesting to get together and to compare his workshop to my workshop, see what we've done similarly, what we've done differently. Maybe people out there will get some ideas uh, from our successes and mistakes. Uh, part one of this series, we talk about tools. Part two of this series, which you're watching now, we're going to talk about storage. And in part three of this series, we talk about uh, electrical and lighting. Now you'll find links to the other two parts at the end of this video. Uh, and also uh, behind the info icon in the upper right hand corner of the video. And also below the video in the show notes. So, uh, let's get started. Let's talk a little bit about tool storage for wood turning, although a lot of things are going to uh, comment would also apply to, to flat work, but uh, I like everything very convenient within reach, so I've got a place to put my uh, angle drill for sanding on the wall, and, and I use a French cleat system, and we can go into more detail uh, later. My vacuum pump hangs on the wall on a French cleat system, uh, but one of the handiest things I've made is this uh, little storage unit hangs on a French cleat system where everything I use for wood turning of, of a nature of uh, balls, uh, drive centers, screwdriver, uh, pair of pliers, uh, any number of small things where I can just reach out and grab them, a little piece of paraffin, uh, tommy bars, uh, my chucks, my chuck jaws, uh, little spacers, uh, sandpaper that I can, I can pull off. Uh, Oil, things I can do, while well, I'm using in the middle of a project, I can just reach out. And then, of course, I've got some storage uh, on a little shelf that comes with Powermatic where I've got some live centers and a knockout bar uh, storing them. One thing I have found very convenient is this uh, little storage hanger unit that you see right here. This is uh, made out of uh, plastic of some sort. Cost about 15 to 20 bucks. Uh, I found it available in several places. And it's got lots of little holes in it. I've just screwed it into the studs um, that are hidden behind my pegboard. And as you can see here, I'm using it for storage of drive centers and similar small items such as that. Yeah, I find it very convenient. It's right near both of my lays, and I can get to it with one step or so. A lot of people want to build a ballast box, and for smaller lays, sometimes that's a good idea. For a pyromatic, it wasn't necessary, so this is not a ballast box. Uh, it's a storage box, because uh, I don't turn huge, massive, out-of-balance out of pieces, uh, so I didn't want to fill this up with sandbags, but it makes it nice for uh, tools that aren't used very occasionally that are fairly long. Uh, I did ha have access to ballast. I picked up some uh, granite from a kitchen re refurb uh, that doesn't take up a lot of space that just lays on top of the, the box. I've got storage for my, my extra uh, tool rests. Uh, I've got a mallet, mallet down underneath here occasionally. I've got a mount here on the side for a, a drill, a Morse taper drill I use occasionally for hollowing. The key is convenience. On the side of the lathe here, I've got a little tool storage rack. Uh, I don't believe in putting tools on the, uh, the lathe bed because they're going to have a tendency to roll. Sooner or later, one of them's going to hit your foot. Uh, this is very convenient. It, it can stay on the stand or I can put it on the, on the lathe bed. Now, I built this little cabinet. It's on rollers. and One of the nice features about this is I can move this out of the way and I can take advantage of this particular lathe sliding headstock feature. This is pretty heavy. It's about 57 pounds. I don't want to lift it and move it. I do have a bad back like most guys my age, but I can slide it over there and just wheel this out of the way. Now, I put the drawers on the end so I wouldn't get as much chips falling into them, although they still get some chips, and I've got a little slide-out area for I can put finishing or extra items while I'm working on a project, or a little sit-down desk if I need to uh, make some notes. 
And then I've got a series of drawers, kind of like a mechanic's chest, of different different sizes with you know diamond hones, pocket knives, small pliers. It just goes on and on. Uh, but I know where everything is in these drawers, and I think a key mistake that some people make, I, I certainly made it on my first one, is making all the drawers very large because then things tend to pile up and you can't see things. And I even down the bottom, I do have a large one for various uh, threaded blocks and glue blocks and, and wooden jigs. I'm not a big fan of uh, pegboard, but uh, uh, I had this left over from previous previous shop, but it, it is a great area to hang these large table saw and bandsaw fixtures that are rarely rarely used that are too big to put in a in a drawer. Mike and I have vastly different ideas of the best way to, to do storage in the workshop. As you see in Mike's shop, he's built a lot of cabinets and uh, drawers and uh, French cleat system and everything for his shop. Uh, in my shop, pretty much all you'll see is pegboard. Pegboard all the way around the shop. That's like I said, my pegboard goes all the way around the workshop. From the shop, front of the shop, where I've got uh, a garage door, all the way down the side here. And it's about, I think, 24, 28 feet long. I can't remember exactly. And then all the way up the other side of the workshop, I've got pegboard here as well. Including right over beside the door. Basically, everywhere there was a stud exposed has been covered up with pegboard. <laughs> to me, this is the best and the easiest way to store the tools that I frequently use and and even the ones that I infrequently use. Um, Mike's got lots of drawers and only one piece of pegboard. I've got lots of pegboard and I think maybe I've only got one drawer unit in here aside from Paul's small part storage. <laughs> Mike told me one reason he doesn't like pegboard is that the pegs want to pull out all the time and uh, I certainly agree with that. The solution that I found when I started putting together this workshop I looked specifically for quarter inch pegs that didn't cost an arm and a leg and I found these plastic ones and they have quarter inch posts on them like this and like this and they're also angled just a little bit I don't know if it's going to show there but this one's angled downward just a little bit so you plug it in there and then you push it in there and now it's really solid you can pull it out uh, if you put some pressure on it but it's not going to come out too easily this one is the same thing. Now this one, the uh, angles on these two pegs are quite obvious, I think. So you put that one in, put that one in, and now you've got a really solid peg there. It's not going to come out unless you really put some pressure into it. Frequently a lot of lathes, uh, stands lend themselves to tool storage underneath, uh, such as this uh, simple one I've made for the jet, for the tools that I don't tend to use not so often. And, once I moved to a Pyromatic, I relegated my jet to a uh, three-on-one build buffer. One of the handiest things I think that everybody's got to come up with some type of solution is tool storage. If you're turning tool uh, storage, your gouges and, and chisels, I made a lazy Susan. Not everybody's got this many tools, and I probably there's no such thing as a bad tool, just tools you don't use as often. Uh, I've also got a bucket which I put a donut in it with holes. And this is very handy because I can keep this close to me for the tools I'm using on a project, but it's also easy to, to transport tools off-site to, to workshops and, and demonstrations, which is a, uh, a, a very nice, nice feature. Let me quickly mention one, one a safety design feature. I've seen people that have wood-turning tool designs where the, the sharp end of the tool is up, and that just scares the living bejesus out of me because if you slip... Uh, it's treating the improbable or unlikely as impossible. One slip and you catch this under your throat, you're going to bleed out before anyone ever gets to you. Uh, it's not that hard to identify your tools. I put letters on them. I have a lot of handmade uh, uh, tool handles so I can generally recognize the tool uh, from, from the uh, handle or the, or the marking on the handle. X for scraper, D for dovetail, B for bowl gouge, what have you. Yes. I'm afraid I'm up dangerously. Uh, I know this is not a safe approach. My wife has been on me about it for years. 
Uh, and now Mike has pointed out on camera how foolish I am. I can't deny it. I'm going to have to change this and do something else with them. But I'll tell you, it's really convenient this way, even though it's not safe. Granted, not safe, but I can tell what everything is. Otherwise, I have to put them upside down or something and uh, burn a name or something into the bottom of it. It won't be nearly as easy, I don't think. But I'll grant you it's a lot safer. I've also put this unit on wheels so I can move it around closer to whatever lathe I happen to be working on. Well, I, another way I have of storing my wood turning chisels is right here on my mini lathe, which is basically my traveling lathe. Uh, when I used to have things for sale at galleries, uh, I would sometimes take my lathe here, over there, do a demo while people were watching, make stuff while they uh, were there. And so I put these PVC pipe sections on here, put a little piece of wood in the bottom there to, to keep them, uh, uh, keep the tool from dropping all the way through. All I have to do is be careful when I reach for a tool back here, not to uh, put a trough down the length of my arm on these points right here. Mike's got me there. Going to have to find a better way. Wood storage is always a challenge in a shop. Uh, I store some uh, dried wood over here in this inexpensive uh, uh, shelf, shelf assembly. And, you know, my shop, this is a good example of how things just grow. Uh, I had some extra PVC, so I, I put it on the side so I could put dowels and extra tool handles in. Uh, over here, I, I generally keep smaller pieces and exotic, uh, exotic wood. I've got some larger pieces uh, against the wall over there. One thing every shop needs is a place to store wood. Generally, I found storing it outside really shortens the life of uh, the logs and, and the pieces that I've got. So I try and store the wood that I intend to use, say within the next year or so, inside, and it gets stuffed down below, generally below workbenches and a few places like that. I don't really have uh, a nicely dedicated shelf or anything for wood storage. Uh, and even underneath my workbench there, you can see pretty much all the spare space was taken up with uh, a few logs that I managed to get hold of just recently. and cut down into slabs. Over here, storage area, I was able to pick up this wall cabinet from a neighbor's uh, kitchen refurb and, and that makes it handy. I, I can put some things that I want to try to keep dust, dust off of them a little bit. I designed this one uh, to tailor for all my wood turning so I've got a cabinet here I can put my uh, trimmed dust shield in. I've got an open area where I put my drill, uh, electric drills and then I've got a series of drawers in different sizes for different uh, different items, large bulky items. And then over here I've got some larger cabinets. This is my workstation for wood burning, signing my signature on a work, doing some glue ups uh, occasionally. That, that works well. Little desk if I need to work on something. And then I've got some places to put some larger uh, box underneath. Uh, I made this little cabinet for some of my, my drill accessories and basically it was an old drawer which I just cut in half on a table saw and made a little cabinet uh, that I could put some of the drill bits in and then I hang some of them frequently used on the outside and I made this little tray to put smaller items that uh, don't hang very well and, and that's handy. And my, my other concession to drawers is uh, a number of uh, bins pre-made bins that I hang up on my pegboard for small part storage like these right here which are probably the most uh, convenient bins I put up in the workshop anywhere these are fairly good not quite as convenient and some really old uh, <laughs> uh, small parts bins right here and they go way back I mentioned a French, my French cleat system. Basically, it's 45 degree angle on two matching pieces, so you can take a four by eight sheet of plywood and rip these strips of about oh three and a half inches. The, 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 it's extremely versatile because you can make any little adapter for almost any little little tool, uh, and it really lends itself to rearranging your shop by just picking up an item and moving it somewhere else. But the key to the French cleat system 
is you need to do it early on in your design because once you start uh, moving into your shop, putting things on the wall, very difficult to go back in and put a French cleat. Wall storage can be very handy, especially for larger items such as this table. I just lift this up and drop it back in space. Uh, the guard on my table saw, uh, my Lyle Jameson hollowing rig uh, up against the wall. Over here against the wall, it's not so easy to get to it. I've got a whiteboard. i uh, got a note from my, sh my uh, shop, uh, shop fairy, Happy Corner by Pepper. Here's an example of, of making a little rig to hold something that's otherwise large and, and bulky, and that's a, a laser, shop made laser uh, rig for my hollowing system. In addition, I've got this closet here that so I take advantage of the space here for uh, all the different clamps. You never can have too many clamps if you're a flat worker. So I have clamps here, C clamps here. Uh, here's my Lyle Jameson hollowing rig, the other part, with a special little cleat. Uh, to store it. I've got some hand screws and larger clamps on, on the side. That about wraps it up for our discussion of storage in the workshop. Uh, we do hope you have found this video useful or at the very least perhaps minimally amusing. Uh, for the other two videos uh, about workshops, tools, and electrical and lighting, just take a look around the screen. You'll find links to them and you'll be able to go right there. See you next video.